What I love, and by love, I mean that sarcastically, but what I love about the Republicans' platform is that they can see the signs that it is not working, but they are just going to lean into it and they're just going to go full blast for it. And I am here for it because you can tell that they are being shown these numbers. You know that they are looking at these numbers because if I can get on my Google machine as a regular person that is not a political strategist or operative and see that these numbers are terrible where it comes to anti-choice and restricting women's reproductive rights, you can see it is wildly unpopular amongst young people, women, um, black people. It is wildly unproductive. You can see it in the votes but they are just going to lean in. They said, I don't care that we keep losing. We just go keep on doing it anyway. And I love that for them. May they continue to take these L's. May they continue to take these L's. <laughs> Anyways, I was like, let me look at some of these numbers. You know that they poll who is anti-choice and um, who is anti-choice and pro-choice. I am honestly, obviously, pro-choice. So let's see some of these numbers. These numbers are from Pew Research and because of the way that the graph looks, just know that the first set of numbers that you'll see will be the pro-choice people and the second set of numbers will be the anti-choice people. Um, you're going to see some of the things are cut off. I apologize, I couldn't get everything on the screen. So um, just for U.S. and so there's pro-choice, pro-life, and then there's a category that's like the middle of the road, kind of wishy-washy people. So that's the reason why the numbers don't add up 100%. Okay, so the number of U.S. adults, 52% are pro-choice, 44% are anti-choice. Of women, um, of I'm sorry, of men, less than 50%, I mean, well, I'm, let me say that again. 47% are pro-choice, 48% are pro-life. Women, over 50, I mean, 55% are pro-choice, 55%. That is more, that is well over the 50% threshold. Now, the younger generation, you can see that right here. The younger generation are way more pro-choice than the older generation. The numbers um, with the younger generation, like, let's look at the, 18 to 29 year olds is 64 percent that are pro-choice this is the reason why in the midterms which saw a lot of youth activation that is the reason why after the midterms republicans is like we have got to raise the rate i mean raise the age of voters so 18 to 29 64 percent you get to the um 65 and older crowd the 50 and older crowd the the pro-choice people start to drop so it you can't see it, but it says 50 to 64 are 40% pro-choice. And then it says 65 and older are 46% pro-choice. The younger generation is pro-choice. And these older folks, the older voters have been, um, you know, they have been in charge for the longest time. But now their demographic is waning and the, the new blood is coming in and the younger folks are more pro-choice between um the races it the first category is just white and then the second is people of color but white people it says 51 percent is pro-choice um, people of color 54 percent um, pro-choice and then the the level of graduation i mean the level of education plays a factor y'all y'all the um the higher the graduate I mean the higher the education the more likely they are to be pro choice. The no education people you cannot see it super duper well, but it says no college is forty one percent um, pro choice. It's fifty four percent anti choice. The more money you make, the more pro choice you are. The less money you make, why these people that aren't making very much money so. Under household income, like I said, I know that this is cut off. It's cut off because I was trying to get as much on this as possible. But people that make less than $40,000 are anti-choice. Why? It impacts reproductive freedom, reproductive choices, impacts your finances. Okay, so let's see. Um, also, I mean, this is to be expected. 
if you ID as a Republican, you're anti-choice. That's what this says. Independents still are leaning more towards um, pro-choice. They are 52% to be pro-choice if they're independent. And Democrat, we are pro-choice people. Um, so you guys can, I mean, this is pretty much what is to be expected. Now, the religiosity of it. If people attend church once a week, they are typically anti-choice people. If they, um, if they attend, you know, some kind of middle in every month or so, they are still anti-choice. If they are like me, agnostic, or just never go to church, you're more likely to be pro-choice. And just know, the religiosity of this country is waning. So this is all going to play hand in hand with how people see abortion, reproductive rights, and choice. I have an article to get into. Male employees seem to really hate it when their companies advertise uh, reproductive access, but it makes the job applications roll in. I want to get into this, but I don't want to make this video too long, so stay tuned. I'm going to make another video that tackles this one because it is interesting that the men's are like, mm, we don't really want the women to have choices, but the applications are coming in because there is a shift with job enrollment, I mean, not job enrollment, college enrollments and women's opportunity in the workplace. And it all goes hand in hand because these men's are failing and flailing and they're like, mm, we don't really want women to have choices around here. So stay tuned. Now I want to get into this fortune article. Male employees seem to really dislike it when their companies advertise reproductive access, but it makes the job applications roll in. What are the implications? What could possibly be going on? Workers are just as polarized as the public about corporate support for reproductive benefits, new research shows. For a moment last summer, after the Supreme Court ended the guaranteed right to reproductive care by overturning Roe v. Wade, corporate America seemingly leapt to fill the gap. Hundreds of companies, including household names like Apple, Amazon, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Match Group, Uber, Tesla, and Zillow, pledged that they would pay for workers to access reproductive care if their states denied it in announcements that drew fierce criticism from conservatives. Before I move forward with this, it is crazy that um, conservatives have such an issue with businesses operating how they want to when they act like they believe in freedoms, but every chance they get, every step of the way, the freedoms that they believe in are only the freedoms that they rubber stamp. So just keep that in mind. They act like states are supposed to have rights, yet they get mad when people have rights in other states or go to other states. They are really for restrictions based on their belief system. Okay, so let's get back into the article. How did many of these same workers feel about that? Research released Tuesday indicates they are just as polarized as po politicians. Companies that publicly announced an, um, a reproductive benefit saw a rise in interest from potential applicants, but they also made some existing male workers unhappy as evidenced by their poor ratings of their management. The polarization that we currently see, particularly on this topic, is clearly seeping into our jobs. You don't think of yourself as clocking in and out of work anymore. You want to bring your whole... Okay, so it looks like 317 companies were examined, 2.5 million postings with wage information, and 6.5 million company reviews comparing data before and after the Dobbs ruling on June 24th of last year. Companies that declared their support for reproductive rights saw an 8% increase in clicks in their job postings compared with the companies that said nothing. That's what the research found. That's similar to the increase generated by bumping up advertising pay by 12%, according to Indeed. The increase was especially pronounced for um, postings that were in female-dominated industries in states that re restricted abortion as well as for jobs located as well as for jobs located in democratic leaning states. Perhaps aware of public reactions, companies became less likely to announce support for um, reproductive access benefits. And so because these men's are mad because of women getting this benefit, they gave a 4% increase in money 
where they saw the attitudes had changed. Perfect. So we are awarding bad attitudes here. This part in the middle. There's also the likelihood that male employees are less likely than female ones to directly use a reproductive care um, health benefit and may feel resentful that others might be getting a generous benefit that they can't use. The average um, worth of an um, a re reproductive care benefit was pegged at around $4,500 based on Indeed's analysis of corporate announcements. I want to be real honest here. Being a woman and some of the things that we go through on a typical basis cost us more in the long run. Um, pregnancy, aftercare, um, you know, taking care of ourselves afterwards is expensive. And so for us to get a benefit is honestly kind of just balancing the scales a little bit. I'm not going to read this whole long thing, but basically these dudes are mad and um, it just shows the divide in culture. Like they really are showing us that there will continue to be a divide where women and men are in the same businesses and where um, this politics of reproductive care and choice or anti-choice people land. Y'all jump in the comments. Tell me what you think. Like, comment, share.